The Story of Prophet Sulaiman Sulaiman, peace be upon him, was the son of Prophet Dawood, peace be upon him. Dawood was the wise king of Israel and a noble prophet of Allah, SWT. Sulaiman learnt from his father's knowledge and judgment and often joined his father during hearings and meetings. He was an observer and learned from him and occasionally contributed to the discussion too. One day, Prophet Dawood called his 19 sons in front of the chiefs and academic scholars of his kingdom. He then asked them questions, nine different questions. These questions were a test for the throne. Whoever was able to answer all of these would be his successor after he dies and rule the kingdom of Israel after him. The sons of Prophet Dawood became flustered and couldn't answer these questions. The youngest of the sons, Sulaiman, was the only one who stood up and answered every single one correctly. Impressed by these answers, Prophet Dawood appointed his son Sulaiman to take charge after his death. So, with the passing of time, Sulaiman inherited the kingdom of Israel and was elected by Allah to continue his father's prophethood. He begged Allah for a kingdom that would occur to none after him, a kingdom so great no other could compare. So then, Allah the Almighty granted Sulaiman his wish and bestowed upon him many miracles. For example, he was given the ability to control the wind, which he used to travel at incredible speeds, the power to control jinns and make them obey his commands, and he was also blessed with the ability to communicate with animals. In his mission as a prophet of Allah, Sulaiman rebuilt Masjid Al-Aqsa as for a place of worship to pray in. From there, Sulaiman and his followers made pilgrimage to Makkah. On completion of their Hajj, they traveled to Yemen where Sulaiman witnessed the Yemeni's incredible water channeling mechanism. He desired to replicate this system in his own land, but knew that they had insufficient springs. Determined to find a way, Sulaiman set out his hupo bird, which had the ability to detect water underground. Time went on, and the bird still had not returned and was nowhere in sight. Sulaiman, who grew increasingly impatient, exclaimed, Why do I not see the hupo bird? I will surely punish him with a severe torment or slaughter him unless he brings me a clear reason. Soon after, the hupo returned to Sulaiman with news and told him that there is a queen named Bilkis, who ruled over a kingdom that worshipped the sun instead of Allah. The Prophet then sent out a letter to Bilkis to submit to Allah and come to the true word of God. After the queen received the letter and read Sulaiman's call back to Allah, she was disturbed and summoned her advisors for advice. They told her that they were prepared to fight at her command. However, she was not aware of Sulaiman's army, so she did not want to take any risks of a reckless war. The advisors decided to send their messengers to the Prophet's palace, sending some valuable gifts with intentions of bringing back information about Sulaiman's army. Sulaiman peace be upon him, immediately learnt of Bilkis's response and decided to display the might of his army to her messengers. When the messengers arrived, all of Sulaiman's army, complete with animals such as lions and tigers, birds, men and jinn, gathered before them. Bilkis's messengers were indeed stunned by the size and variety of Sulaiman's army. His incomparable strength and wealth was clear. The messengers eagerly presented Bilkis's gift to Sulaiman with a pledge of friendship. However, Sulaiman knew their intention of stealing information about his army power. He turned them away immediately and told them to return back to their queen and warn her that she must submit to Allah or else he will destroy her country. The messengers soon returned to their queen and conveyed Sulaiman's message together with an account of the magnificence of his kingdom. Bilkis, the queen, decided to meet Sulaiman in person together with her officials. On receiving this news, Sulaiman decided to show Bilkis and her officials the power of the miracles bestowed to him by Allah. So he asked his army for one of them to bring her throne. One of his most powerful jinns insisted and brought the throne of Bilkis in a blink of an eye. Sulaiman himself was amazed by the miracle Allah had given him of controlling the jinns and praised his Lord immensely. Sulaiman then instructed the jinn to disguise her throne and to see whether she will be guided to truth or will be of those who is not guided. He then ordered the jinns to build a palace with floors made of thin but solid glass, underneath through which rivers flowed. When Bilkis arrived, the throne immediately caught her attention. Having noticed Bilkis's reaction to the throne, 
Suleiman asked if it is her throne. Bilkis was thoroughly confused. She wondered if her throne actually got here or if it was possible that someone replicated it. She replied cautiously that it resembled hers very much. Suleiman judged her to be intelligent and diplomatic, so he then invited her to his palace. When Bilkis was about to enter, she mistook the glass floor for water and lifted her skirts. Suleiman told her that the floor is not water and indeed made from smooth glass. Bilkis was amazed and realized she was accompanied by not just any ordinary man. After spending some time with the Prophet in his palace, she then realized her beliefs in praising the sun was false and submitted to Allah. Bilkis realized that Suleiman's kingdom was indeed unlike any palace she had seen before. She witnessed his wisdom and humility along with his mighty power and accepted him as the messenger of Allah. She repented and embraced Islam along with her nation. Prophet Suleiman lived and ruled in glory. Much of his work was performed by the jinns as a punishment for making people believe that jinns had knowledge of the unseen. Suleiman taught his people that Allah alone had such knowledge. Even Prophet Suleiman's death was a lesson in this regard. The future is not known neither by the jinns nor by the prophets, but by Allah alone. Suleiman was seated holding his staff while he oversaw some jinns working in a mine. The jinns, who were terrified of Suleiman, were heavily focused on the building when Allah decided to take Suleiman's life. No one was aware of his death until days later a hungry ant began nibbling on his wooden staff. As it ate on, the staff broke and Prophet Suleiman's body that was leaning on it fell to the floor. People ran to their prophet and soon realized that he had died long ago. Everyone at that moment then learned that had the jinns truly did not possess the knowledge of the unseen as they wouldn't have tormented themselves working hard, thinking Suleiman was watching them. The life and death of Suleiman is indeed full of miracles from which mankind can derive incredible less. And I leave you with a Quran verse about his death and the miracle of showing that jinns truly do not know anything and no one has the capacity of knowledge of this life and the next compared to Allah the Almighty. فَلَمَّا قَضَيْنَا